We have a, a, a town hall meeting tonight, and we have ooh, um, we have a town hall meeting tonight. And I would like for us all to get together on the information that we would like to have presented, how we want it presented, what kind of factual documentation you want in. I put together quite a bit of stuff, but. At this point, it needs to be a board decision as to how we want to proceed with this. Any comments? Um, one thing I did do is I did call the district attorney today, and on the complaints they've been issued by Annika Peacock and Don Gray, um, there's still no evidence of any crime that they've seen. And I also spoke with the FPPC, and there's no evidence of a crime there in any of their complaints. Good. Kim, can you share with us what you put together? I mean, uh, pass to pass, we can just look at it, or no? Absolutely, I can, yeah, I can share everything. I don't know how much you want to know. One of the things I'd like to point out is I did put a timeline together. It shows board members, significant events, um, GMs, fire chiefs for the entire timeline and things that, that have happened. One of the things that, there's no way I can put it up there, is I have 
lists of things that this board has accomplished um, since our inception as of 2022. I kind of go from when Adam came on board. And I'm struggling to find that paper. meeting. I can tell you what I've done. This is not that. I can just tell you what I've done. So some of the things that I think that we need to let people know of the, the changes and accomplishments that have been made by this board since we took, took um, our seats. We have the discovery, the investigation, and the understanding of the insurance lapse. We've set in place fire, uh, checks and balances for all financial transactions. We set, uh, and all of this is a board and GM and fire chief thing. This isn't, this is just what this administration has accomplished. Started the class account, which went from 1600 or so dollars a year to about $4,000 a month in interest on the um, set-aside funds. We discovered um, situations regarding lawsuits that the board had not been made aware of, and negotiations were made to finalize all of that. Um, there has been a culture change in that professionalism to the highest degree has been demanded of every person um, employee, board member on this, on this team. Our chief established policies for professional fire department and uh, enforced cooperation with those. There has been um, a standard set for accountability for all leadership. <clears throat> the investigation of the IMT funds that were denied by the state resulted in corrections to the billing of the IMT program and the policies therein. We've had established and maintained a very open communication between the board and the GM and, it, and fire chief administration. In 21-22, the budget that we inherited as this board, as it sits, was $2,730,978. I mean $2, in 23-24, we establish a budget of $1,989, $1,989,210, saving over $741,777 in budgeted cuts. We met, <clears throat> this administration operated a fully staffed with 11 firefighters, professional fire and ambulance department for less than was ever previously, than, than was previously um, happening. Saving over $85,000 in overtime alone by negotiating with the um, uh, union to do the new schedule, which resulted in a lot less overtime. Um, the, the board and employees and um, firefighters are, uh, have routine mandated policies to maintain whatever certifications that we all need. That has been put in place where that is kept up to date and monitored. We hired a fire chief that came in and set standards for professionalism that were expected to be adhered to, and there were consequences and accountability if they were not adhered to. We put up with um, a lot of, I'm just going to say it, I'm, I'm, gloves are off guys. You may ask me to resign at the end of this day. There was insubordination, there was direct disobedience, there was complete 
non-respect of any authority figure going on, and because of the expectation that that had to be wiped out, including harassment of other people, including our board members, there were retaliations. I'm going to go on to what we've got going on that's ongoing. The policy and procedures manual is being totally updated. It's about two-thirds done, as I understand. Our goal was June, and I think we're going to hit it before then. Uh, we have checked into whatever, quote, corruption or mishandling, either to learn for it or to spell it. We're checking into the cost of retired medical benefits programs, trying to see that everything was done appropriately and that those who deserve the benefits are getting them. And to see what costs can be cut reasonably and within our policies. There's been a review of the 2000, it was brought up to us about the 1213 grand jury report. It's been read, gone through, any, uh, anything that was um, pointed out as a mishandling or a misappropriation on, our, on the board's part at that time has been addressed and we are no longer making sure that we are no longer adhering to those policies. Checking into the history of the um, TOT tax, transient occupancy tax, and trying to see if there's any way that the county can be coerced or just talked into turning some of that money over since the original purpose of that TOT tax was to help defray costs to the services provided to a community with high transient occupancy. We're making sure that this board is in compliance with all mandated regulations and Brown Act requirements at all times. We're working on a strategic 10-year plan. That's not something we have gotten into the meat of because we've been a little busy. And that's, that's what I have come up with. I'm sure that you have more. Uh, some of you have been on the board quite a bit longer, that kind of thing. That's the kind of information I would like to get out there. We have been, in my opinion, we have tried to act honorably, we have been quiet, and we have suffered attacks that are libelous and slanderous and incorrect and unproven. I feel that the community is being misled into believing that this is a corrupt board and that we don't know what we're doing. We need to prove that wrong. If they only hear one side, I don't blame them for voting out a tax measure that's going to kill this community. I very, feel very strongly about this. Now, those are my thoughts. I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for the board. I would like to hear you guys comment on this, and then we can get into what we want to do. Kim, I agree with you with the uh, slanderous stuff and some of the untrue things that are going on in, on social media. I try to stay away from it, but that's like sticking your head in the sand because not everyone else is reading it, so you kind of need to know what's the thought process going on around it out there. So I. I've tried reading it a, a bit, but it's it's hard to swallow because some of it's half true and some of it's half false, so it's it's hard to keep up with it. Um, for as far as the night goes at that town hall meeting, I know that we're constrained to basically information only or education only. Um, do you know, or maybe Adam knows? Can we uh, go into things like? Um, what would happen if it doesn't pass, you know, to, to kind of give a synopsis of what that would look like? Or, or are we constrained to just information only? Um, no, that, that would be information. As long as you're, you can basically do anything except for advocate for, pat for or against passage. So we can, of course, um, share scenarios. Um, you know, since we have to plan anyway, and we have put together um, basically, budgets and plans of uh, 
what would happen under Measure B and under Measure C, and also what would happen if, if neither of them passed. And so we shared that at the last town hall. Um, we'll go over that again at tonight's town hall, um, so that at least people understand um, that, you know, this misconception that number one, Cal Fire is going to come in and save us is simply not true. Um, the misleading uh, statements that if you vote no on this, that we'll just do another tax measure next year and start the fire department back up again. That's, that's just not how it works. Um, so making sure that people understand that this year is probably the last year that we have a chance to get get funding is, I think, perfectly appropriate. Okay. I know that uh, Chief Balzarini is not here, so I'm going to kind of rely on the people who do know what I'm talking about. It's my understanding that once <clears throat> Once this board and this fire department are completely wiped off the earth, that a new fire department can just be started up and that they can take over the 198 main. How true is that? Uh, I mean, technically true, um, but if we don't have money today, I don't know how a new board would have money in the future for startup costs. I, I don't know how that would work. They must be smarter than me. Any other questions, guys? Now's the time. Take the gloves off. Let's go. I think that uh, the board has worked very hard to turn this whole problem around. And the problem was very poor management. They didn't take care of personnel issues, didn't take care of financial issues. And that's one of the biggest things that we have to be responsible for. And when we found out what our finances were, we had to do something. We couldn't just allow it to continue. Uh, we can't go into debt a million dollars a year and think you'll ever be able to pull that out. You can't do it. It won't work. And I think one of the biggest things we've done is we had to change the climate. And I know that when there was an investigation going on, as soon as some of the people that had been here at the time uh, were asked to come in and do a, uh, deposition. a deposition, they resigned. And now they want to come back under a new administration. That, that would put us right back where we were before. And that doesn't work. I mean, and just, just to be clear, I mean, you're, you're exactly right, uh, Art. Um, the people, you know, who used to work here who are now out in the community <coughs> bashing us are the very types of employees that we don't want to be here in the first place, and they certainly have no business coming back here in the future. They're, they're the ones that that created the, the toxic culture that has uh, unfortunately infested the entire agency that you're not, you're not having to purge. Uh, why you would invite people who ruined it the first time back in is beyond me. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, guys. Anything else? Just so you know, I have spent the last two weeks delving into every single set of minutes, every that I hadn't already read, going through all of the um, social media pages, collecting what's wrong. And I will tell you, these are the things that I have found. Nothing. There is absolutely not one evidence of corruption, mishandling of funds, incorrect decisions, other than personal bias. There is no supporting evidence. Ms. Peacock has gone to the FPPC. She has gone to the grand jury. She has gone to the uh, board of supervisors. And, she, and she's gone to the district attorney. We have checked with every one of those entities to say, what have we done wrong? What can we reinforce? What can we do better? And every single one of them has said, you are fine. There is nothing here. And yet we are continued to be slandered. There is a GoFundMe page to stop CPU decorruption. I would like to see any evidence of corruption that this board and this administration has 
done anything wrong. If you know of something that has been done and you're not coming forth, then that is on you as a citizen. If there is something that needs to be corrected, it can't be corrected if you don't point it out. But a bias because you didn't get a job you were not qualified for. If there, if you have a bias because somebody said something to you that Stop. you didn't like. No. If you have a bias, I. This is the truth. This is nobody. You this know, is the truth. Did, did, Excuse you me. Know, this is our meeting. This is not you your she's meeting. Doing this because she didn't get the job because she didn't get an interview. I didn't or say. I didn't say. No, she didn't. Excuse so me. Now let's Barbara, I will ask Barbara. you to leave if you cannot behave. Well, I can't behave. This is not your meeting. This is our meeting, but and we are conducting business. But you tell the whole truth, and you're not. She did not get called in for an interview. And Excuse so, me. So you do not you know what happened. You were not a part of the board at that time. I believe you, you were on the board in 2012 and 2013. If somebody taxes. wants to say something, you this will be acknowledged. This is a Mr. Brown Act violation. This is not a meeting about me. This is a meeting about slanderous remarks that are being made Where into the that? public. That's 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 it's how we want to handle. So you lied to us. You lied about the purpose of this meeting. And now you're calling us liars. You're discussing you're discussing voter education. And if people out in the community, all the keyboard warriors are lying, you definitely have an obligation. I'm right here. Keyboard warrior. I am right and here. You definitely have an obligation to share the truth because we have documentation that we can prove. Uh, Respectfully, this should be on the board. board. If you're gonna have a meeting, Excuse me, we do not have public comment at this time. This is not your opportunity. You're violating the Brown Act and I'm reporting. Thank you. Yes, sir? This is about the discussion of tax measures and education. I'm not here to hear roll call and how everybody's going to... I'm sorry you don't like the way we're conducting our meeting. This, this is, is our meeting. meeting. I am tired of being held hostage by 12 people with an agenda. This is a 12, I'm not 12 people. You're one of them. I'm them. calling for a point of order so we can get onto the discussion with the tax measures. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> this isn't about the tax measures. This is how we want to deal with educating people about the tax measures. The problem, as, we, as I see it, is that people are being misinformed with untrue and unsubstantiated comments and accusations. I have asked for you several times in, this meet, in these meetings, and we set up a workshop for you to bring these charges forth and to talk to us and to help us understand what was going on, what your point was. Every time, people I have asked, I came to Barbara, I am talking. And I'm Barbara. Barbara. What? I am talking. Point of order, you are not. Endless talking. Every time people refuse to speak and refuse to show support for their uh, community. for their community. community, right? How do the point of this meeting is to find out how do we fight the lies? How do we fight the untruths that are poisoning people's minds? The only way we can do that, in my past experience, is straight on. Just like we're talking about here today. Yes. Just how we're laying it out on the table, and the accusations, the insinuations, the undermining is going on, and we've got to let the people in the community know what's going on. Otherwise, I think we're derelict in... Uh, what's going on with the fire department. Well, I know Kim and I have been here every Tuesday this year for roundtable meetings. Everybody that's come in with an open mind has left here understanding what was going on. I didn't. Um, except for those that Everyone had already made up their mind. mind and came in here to change our minds. I still don't know what we have done that's corrupt. I don't know what ground out laws we violated. I do not know any of these, these things that, have, that are being spread about, about how horrible we are. 
Well, that's why I said to begin with, the FPPC says there's no laws been broken, and the district attorney, which Annika Peacock stood up at the town hall in November and declared there was crimes and comp filed complaints with the district attorney and laws were broken and evidence was sent to the district attorney. I spoke with them today. There's been no evidence of any crime that they've seen. Point of order. Can we get back to the discussion point? This is part of the discussion because, 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 because people are being told. Because what you're talking about is a case against, or what's brought against the board, not about what the measure is about, what it entails, what happens if or what happens. Doug, I'm sorry that you don't understand the purpose of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is, and I'll read it to you again, the education. The education and how to move forward and deal with the false statements that are being made out there. Where people are being poisoned by false statements. That's what I've been told. It's not on the agenda. I see that on the agenda. So if the... It's on their agenda. It's on their agenda. It's on their agenda. It's on their agenda. At this point, because of the outburst, we're going to go to closed session. Thank you for absolutely destroying what we tried to do in front of you. We didn't discuss it. We didn't discuss it. I have a question. What happens if some medicated... Is there educated guys? Yeah. We could probably wait a few minutes and a couple of them will reconvene. Part of the discussion needs to be is how far are we going to get into the weeds. Um, I'm still hearing that we're paying six-figure salaries to our general manager and stuff like this that are just, just false statements. How do, we, how do we as a group want to approach these false statements? Do we want to... How far do we want to go? Alan, would you close the door for me, please? Oh, Steve, maybe you could just point each one of those out one by one and just address them. Mike. 
taking Adam's salary as an example, this is what it is. I mean, it's public knowledge. I don't know why anybody right. even falls for that. Yeah, but stuff. even, you know, Mike, when we went to the Board of Supervisors meeting in Quincy, stood up there and he was telling the Board of Supervisors this, and it's like, <laughs> that's not happened. So, um, I don't think we have anything to lose, quite frankly. I, and I think the community has a lot to lose a lot. if we don't. Yes. And they have no idea yet, it hasn't soaked in yet, mm -hmm. what the ramifications could be. One of the things I wanted to point out before they left was that at this point, my, <clears throat> my goal is getting a tax measure in place of some kind. So we have some type of fire department and possibly EMS response. You have until November to get rid of us, but at least let's get this started because we won't have any money coming in until 25, late 25, or 26. Uh, 20, Early 25, mid 25. Well, if, you, if this doesn't pass and then you go to the voters again in November, then you wouldn't get any money until 26. Right. My point was, that, that's the point I wanted to make. That didn't happen. <clears throat> but I will tell you, when I see on Facebook somebody asking on a GoFundMe page for money to stop the CPUD corruption, I want to vomit. Yes, I'll show you. And, and she also stated that that would, uh, so she can get hire an attorney. Because she has to fight the cease and desist order. And I'm sorry that we are having to have one person that we're talking about. You're but this is, I don't want the mic. I'm mad. Can you, can you hear? Don't move your chairs out. God knew I was yeah. going to be mad and be yelling today, so he took my voice. I have a question for you, Steve. You've been at all these CAC meetings. What's going on? What meetings? All the CAC meetings. The Citizens Advisory Council. I only went to one. Do what? I only went to one, the first one. And I just sat there to observe. And, and I've, I had a CAC member tell me that you keep going, that you've been attending all of them. I haven't attended any but the one. That was it. I haven't been to any others. So you're getting false information. Well, there's a first. Thank you for point, thank you for that because it, it's just one more thing. If the devil can't make you, somebody. huh? I, it might be a good idea to have somebody at those meetings. It, it it might be, but they have totally shut us off from every type it, of communication. So they made a point of telling us that we're not welcome, that they don't want to speak to us. I would like to know who told you I've been going to these meetings. Barbara Montana. No. <laughs> No way. Well, she's never wrong. Well, I pointed out she was wrong at the last meeting when she was bringing up her the, the way the system was working here. Wait a minute, Barbara, our hands are tied. We are tied to union yes. contracts, period. Do you realize what I just did? Lost your voice. I put it so that you could put it out there. I stated it, a question that I already know the answer to, so that you could say it, not me, because that's important. Well, you didn't know the answer to it. I was I, hoping I, I did. I would have told you if I had been to them. I trusted you okay. to say that. I, if by asking you that... If you ask me a question, I'll answer the question. That's, my, that I, that's okay. what I was hoping for, and I wanted to bring that out from your point of view. Thank you. Um, Here's the thing, though, with all this corruption that's going on and all this money that is uh, somewhere, that uh, every penny is accounted for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what's the point? Where would where's this corruption at? A and then B. It, it's it's visible for everybody to see that what happened. That that just kind of points it out piece by piece, but it's pretty obvious, you know. We. we we ran out of money, and we can't. We couldn't afford the salaries for our paramedics and our EMTs to run an ambulance and a fire crew here with what we had. And it's very obvious. 
I don't know where this corruption thing comes at. I've been on the board since, I didn't even know, I guess since uh, 20 or something like that. This on the board? I think it was 19 or 19, 20. Yeah. And Long time, 1920. I've never seen any board corruption. I've seen some stuff, you know, uh, that I can't mention about certain practices, but that had nothing had nothing to do with the board here at all. No. Or the administration. Or this administration. I'm talking no. about. I am not trying to throw any of the former boards under the bus. That is not my intent. I can only speak since I've been on the board, which typically is when Adam. Two I years. came on right after Adam. We came on right after Adam. So I try to speak only for this board and this administration. I don't speak for them, but I mean about this time period. Um, there have been a lot of things happen in closed session that we cannot discuss. Right that have not been um, pretty. Um, so are you on the PAC? <laughs> Do you guys have questions that we can answer for you? You know what I mean? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You know what I mean? That, oh, I'm shocked. Are, are we opening this up to public but comment? They're, well, they're not. I'm shocked. <laughs> <Yeah, so. laughs> Go ahead, Jenny. I'm teasing you. Yeah, open it. I actually, a discussion of tax measure education. <laughs> you know what? I totally misinterpreted that. Because, oh, my questions about the tax measure are the committee that you want to put together, they're not allowed to advocate one way or another. That's and why you guys have to be separate. That has to be separate. The PAC you, you has guys, to, you guys have to be separate. Oh, I, I know that, but so we, yes, you can advocate. But what, what's imposed upon you to where you can't form a committee to the, and, and the people can't advocate? I, I don't understand it. If there's an easy answer given to me, if it's complicated, well, it's I think it's, it's the Brown Act. Government government resources can't be used for campaign. Is basically what well, I'm yeah. Okay, thank you. I get it. Yeah. Um, so, even though we're not paid. <laughs> and down the road, let's say the measure passes and there's this money coming in. Um, does that committee, no, they don't move into an oversight committee, do they? No, well, that's something that we, we, talk we, we can that. talk about after, if something passes. We, well, at, at your last board meeting, at the last regular board meeting, the, the board gave direction to create the framework for the tax oversight committee. Yeah, I think that would be a committee that would meet quarterly, okay. semi-annually, something like that, and would review expenditures. What did you want? I don't know. Okay. Adam, I think that's a good, I mean, that is a great idea. I mean, it, that may give the public a little more uh, reassurance if they do pass either measure that there's going to be an oversight committee that uh, kind of watches the money and where it goes and how it's spent might be an incentive for them to, yeah. to vote yes. I, I think it's wonderful because we have nothing to hide. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Totally agree. Normally, would, it, would, it, would that responsibility responsibility of watching, well, that, that would fall, fall under the CPUD, wouldn't it? Normally. Right. I mean, Normally. At, the end, at the end of the day, the board has the legal fiduciary duty okay, to, do to, to, to do that, right? Yeah, just adding, adding a, a, a citizens committee um, is, not, is not uncommon for, for special taxes and uh, just gets another layer of review. And everything you do is going to go on the website, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it does provide um, an avenue for the public to believe that they really have a little bit of oversight. Mm -hmm. yes. They hold the buy off for getting the vote. Yeah. Right. I understand what the board's responsibility and the manager's responsibility is. But my, my whole thing that I've been telling people is you can have all the opinions you want, you can listen to whatever facts or non-facts you want. The bottom line is funding the fire department. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here to try and, and help with. And uh, whether you choose B or C, whatever. Um, but it's about funding the fire department. All the other stuff can flesh itself out right. in a later thing, and they're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah, right. Yes, but if, if, if the no campaigns very argument rests upon the fact that yes, we agree, we do need funding, but no, you should vote no because you can't trust the people in charge, that's, that is part of our education campaign because this 
is one of the most transparent periods that CPUD has had, you know, in, in a while. And not through necessarily any malfeasance or fault of, of anyone, but um, there's, we're, we're, we're past the rocky days. We've changed a lot of the culture. We have really nothing to hide at this point. Yeah. There's checks and balances everywhere. Um, there's no funny business going on. And so it is, it is on us, incumbent on us, to make sure that the public understands that you're not throwing your tax money into a black hole, that there right. is actually an accountable system in place. Um, and the people who are trying to change things at, at this point are not the people, uh, not the same people that you might have read about in the grand jury from 12 years ago. Right. The grand jury report from 12 yes. years ago. Can, can I comment on that? When we were going over the timeline, Barbara Montana was big time in that grand jury report. She was yeah, on the board look, and was an employee. Can I comment on that? It was pointed out to her when she said that, you know, how great things were until new people came along. And I'm like, huh. Well, Steve Trotter they, did the same thing. Huh? Steve Trotter stood there and said, why didn't you? Yeah. It, about how they were talking about it back then. I said, well, yeah. if it's so easy to fix, why didn't you fix it then? And this is what I found. Oh, no, no, this is two things I want to say. One to you. Number one, I think you need a mailer to get people to the last town hall meeting. meeting. I really think that that has to happen because the attendance isn't there, and I think that's just something. Well, I bet the attendance will be there tonight. Oh, so. Yeah. Oh. I, so. I will tell you that one of the reasons I, I, and I am totally at, here at your pleasure, I am done being nice. I kind of noticed. <laughs> if you guys tell me to shut up, I will shut up, if that's the way you guys want to go. If you tell me to bring it all out in the open, I will bring it all out in the open. I, this is a board decision. I am not going to put anybody at this board, on this board or in this administration at risk because of my, what I consider passion and fed up with us. if that's a word. I think we should respond and act right up to the line of what's allowed under the under the government laws that we have to deal with on communications and stuff. I think we should do absolutely as much as we legally can. Because that's what I was saying. We, that's why we need to have that meeting today was so that we can all get on the same page because she's taken the brunt of it and we're all supposed to be representing the community. Sure. So. And she said, I got something out for you. Will the DA be sending out an official letter? They, they will not get involved, and he said, she said. But he did tell me on the phone. But they've had an official complaint, right? Yeah, they've, they've had several complaints, but there's no evidence of a crime in any no, of the complaints. No, but are they going to say that there's, are they going to send out a letter? That would be nice. They will, I asked him to, again oh, today, I mean, and he goes, they the cannot community. get involved in he said, she said. FPPC. Yep. And the FPPC. She had no supporting evidence. They, are, they, are they sending out a letter to that fact? They will not. The FPPC, I, I basically yes. do. They well, did. The yeah. FPPC. That was, that was back in, that's not the recent one, right? Yeah. That's December. the one they filed in December. Okay, that's okay. And, and the one um, at the district attorney was in November because she announced it at the town hall at the November meeting. That was when I heard about it. But we couldn't even see the complaint. And when I talked to counsel, she said unless they moved forward, found evidence, there was nothing we could do. So, but the most I got them to say is there's no evidence of a crime in any of their complaints that they've seen. There's nothing to investigate. Can I, just can I say something real quick? Yeah. I think one of the smartest things that we can do as a board is is recognize what the opposition's strongest argument against this measure is. And to me, um, I think their their strongest argument is why should we throw more money at this since we already know that it doesn't work, right? I think that's probably their strongest argument. I could be wrong. Maybe they have something else going on with the corruption thing, but. Yeah. I think that's that's a dead end deal. I think if we could, if like Art said, hit that one head on, um, it might be effective. Yeah, that's why I just went for these couple things that I could yeah. get in writing. And only reason I got the FTC 
PPC was because they named me actually because I was board chair at the time. So they, they contacted me. And that's regarding uh, Fair Political Practices Commission. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think if we can kind of get out there and explain to the public why this is going to work if we get these one of these. That's what he's been doing. Second measure passed. I think he's been doing very, very well. Okay. That. And you're going to do it again tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, just as I talk to people and been talking to quite a few people, actually, a lot of them have sought me out based on my past history here as to what do you think, what do you think? And um, the common theme that I hear from folks, and these are leaders in their communities, little neighborhoods and that kind of thing, is, okay, that all sounds good, but tell me how the money's going to be spent. Mm -hmm. And then some of that's a little bit of the trust, but um, if that could be laid out, how are we going to do that? I mean, I, I have an idea, because I know the expenses involved. Like they, they just want to know where the housing would be spent. Oh, I get it. So that's why it's so much. You do you know. have more of a breakdown this time than we did? The, the slide that you did at the last meeting was helpful. Yeah. That had that breakdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's basically what we're sticking with. I, I'm not willing to start guessing at, at certain things. I don't really want to break it down any further. Um, I think that the important things are what are labor costs going to be, what are professional services going to be, and then what are other things like insurance and equipment repairs, what is that going to be? I mean, those are the, the, the big three. And will you share the insurance status with everyone, please? Oh, um, yes. Yeah, so we did get uh, good news that the employer liability policy is being renewed. Um, the policy is only going up about $1,000, or the premium, rather, is only going up about $1,000, so not, not too bad, although that's still like a 15 some odd percent increase. Um, and this is just for the employer liability, not for all the others that all add up to the 102000 This is just the employer liability policy, which is arguably our most important lately. Um, and the other good news is that they decided not to raise our deductible, so we're still, still with the um, $25,000 deductible. Um, that, of course, is a lot more than the $0 deductible or the $5,000 deductible that we had previously. Um, several of you have already signed checks. Uh, we've already had to start paying the attorneys that our insurer assigned us. We've already had to start paying them. We're paying them the first $25,000 of each of the three claims. So I think so far we've spent about ten thousand or so. So is it? Do you think that insurance rate reflects the the loss of employees that we've had? And you know, they don't. So that was you know my big question, and basically the insurer um, said that you might reasonably conclude that not having employees anymore might reduce <laughs> might reduce. Um, However, that's, that's not the case for us uh, because of our claims history and our loss history. Um, they're not willing to give us a, a break in our premiums uh, now that we have fewer employees. Um, and part of the argument is still um, even non-paid employees, so even volunteer firefighters, they still have all the same rights and protections. They can still sue us. They can be harassed. They can be, you know, all the things that can be done to a, an employee can also be done to volunteers. And so for those purposes, they, also, they, they still run the same risk. Okay. So in, in the insurer's eyes, we're not much better of a risk. Okay. You know, another place that we got our tails kicked in the past was MOU negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, not so much when Adam was here, but in the past, you know, they just rode rough, roughshod over us because they've got professional negotiators and we've got us. And um, I... We are not professional negotiators, and so maybe there, we can put something in the... Because there, if we do, if something does pass, we need to have something in place there so that doesn't well, happen. With again. Margaret, we do have negotiators now. Oh, okay. We had, what, what's her name? Uh, Sophie. Yeah, Sophie, true. this last... And that's something we should mention then, you know? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure... Depending on what kind of measure we get, there's going to be negotiations, and then we're going to, we're definitely, yeah. in my opinion, is definitely going to go back to Margaret and talk to her on yeah. how to move forward. Um, I mean, that was a hard lesson to learn. That's what uh, labor labor costs is the the big one. Big, big huge huge labor change. Big benefits benefits mm -hmm. huge now. Yeah. Um, 
Um, I understand there was a representative from Brian Darling's office here at the last meeting. Have you had any feedback from from mm -hmm. them? Yes. Can you share that information? Mm -hmm. Two words. Good luck. <laughs> I spoke with his, I guess, supervisor, Bruce Ross. I don't know if I told you guys this. He's um, the district, <clears throat> district director. And who directed? Who contacted Brian Darby's office, do you know? I talked, let's see, Monica did. Okay. Well, not, not true. They've been, I have been in contact with both of the Dally's offices since our shutdown two years ago. So they've yeah. been they've been keeping up right. with it this whole time and uh, several months ago, last fall, I reached out to Senator Dolly and asked them if they would facilitate negotiations between Seneca and us. Um, they declined. Apparently they had better things to do. Um, and so, but that is not true that Annika reached out to them. Well, we have actually, been, we have been Bruce meeting. Bruce Roth told me that they had received um, a number of complaints from a group of citizens. And I said, let me guess, it was signed by Annika Peacock. And he said, absolutely. Yeah, I, I heard that phone call, yes. She's been, she's been calling him. Yeah. And, and he just wanted fun. to check in with us and see if everything was okay. I had about, that first conversation was about an hour long. Um, told him what was going on from our point of view. Told him, da 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 da. He asked questions. And then he said, let's get together after your February meeting. Our February meeting, his rep was here, and um, he got back into contact and just wanted to say, he said, I wish there was something we could do to help. This is not something that we can get involved in, da 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 da. Let us know if you need this, this, or this. And that was basically it. I have heard that uh, it's on the internet. Occasionally, then it gets taken off real quick on what some of their plans are. Mm -hmm. And it started out was to, uh, they needed to get on the board, and they want to control the board. And so they're telling the population now out there that uh, we need to start fresh. Go over again, and if this sounds socialistic to you, that's their style. They want to wipe out all the history and start new. Well, you wipe out the history and you're you're doomed to repeat it. And that's what they would get into it. Well, Just especially if they're going to hire back the people we I know. finally got makes out. It makes no difference. I mean, and that Annika would be the uh, GM. Well, she's going for her job she wanted two years ago. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> just to get back to the, the heart of the matter, um, I can tell you anecdotally without, you know, breaking any HIPAA laws or anything, People are be getting very, very frustrated with um, response times, you know? Uh, I'm just talking about EMS service mm -hmm. right now, but yeah. response yeah. times are delayed. And, and our facility transfers, I understand, are basically not horrible. happening. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a horrible situation going on right now. And um, it's not just here and there. It's 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 everywhere, and I believe the entire community is aware of it. So, I mean, this is the time to hit it. You know, um, if there's any way we can get this committee out there to push push this measures, this is the time because people are very frustrated, and they know why. They know why because we're down. So, so what you're saying was, is if we say which is true, probably, that funding a department would improve, is likely to improve response times. Absolutely. And it will benefit not just Chester, but the whole basin. Yes. Speak. I would, I would temper that only with fire response times, yes. Yes. I, I fear we're, you know, we're, we're probably past, or we're very close to, or we have probably just passed the point of no return. For ambulance, that's that ship has sailed. There's no, there's not going to be a point once once PDH and Peninsula plan everything out. I, there's not going to be an opportunity for Senate, uh, for CPUD to take an offer ground ambulance. So just just want to clarify. Okay, EMS, so not the EMS, but fire. I I think we could very safely say like if they do uh, 
go for the 1500 per parcel, that we would do everything we could to recover the ambulance program. Yes, because we would. I mean, we would. We would have the budget and the ability to do that. But I guess the the nuance is really more. Um, you know, our partners are under a lot of pressure to get a long term program up and running, and for one or more ambulance operators to take on our ter our territory. You know, that's going to require some sort of upfront investment on their end, whether it's hiring additional personnel and or bringing on another ambulance. Um, and so I, I, I do kind of fear, um, you know, I wouldn't want to be happily bounding into a meeting, you know, on May 8th saying, hey guys, you can all put down your pencils. We're going to, we've got it again. We're going to take back the ambulance, but thanks for what you did. It's probably not going to go over very well. So I, um, and, and then the question becomes, well, let's just offer a quick response vehicle. We can, you know, we're still going to have EMTs on staff. We can make it a point of bringing more paramedics back on staff. Um, but then the question is, do we want to do that? Because we wouldn't be recouping any right. reimbursable costs from right. insurance. That would be, that would then be directly subsidized by the taxpayers. Yeah, it's got a pencil out. Yeah. It's got a pencil out. And, and at this point, I think PDH and Peninsula and whomever else is looking into ground coverage in Chester long term, you know, they're making those calculations right now on, well, should we put a QRB in town and then rely on the ambulance from Greenville or whatever the case is? I'm just throwing crap out there. But um, I want to be really hesitant. Yeah. Would we have the capacity to bring ambulance back? Yes. Um, but it, it likely would not be under this old, the same old terms that we had with NorCal EMS. It likely would not even make as much money as we had been making, which wasn't a lot of money. Um, the only thing that could and would change this is if today Seneca were to get some sense back into them and open up negotiations with this, I could very easily say that we could have a plan to be back up and running in May if Seneca cooperated with us. But absent their willingness I don't see this happening. Ambulance ever again. So what I've written down well, is... that's a downer. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I don't want people to be under the wrong impression. Well, yeah, no, the unfortunate right. thing is... No, we definitely could. ...up in our committee for the EMS coverage for the basin, not just here, but the basin. People here have been trained that I've got an ambulance around the corner. Mm -hmm. That yeah. isn't that way in most of California. Okay, rural California. Rural, yes. So um, it's, it's a re-education part as well. And I know Peninsula, I'm thankful that they were willing to step up with their staffing and they're looking at it penciling out to help them there. But the transfers don't pencil out, quite honestly. They don't. We lost money with them when I was here. That's just how it was. So um, yeah, it's, it's a tough deal. Our public has been trained for a level of service. And that level of service is going to be the same, no matter what happens. Even if, we were, by some miracle, able to start an ambulance service again. It's going to look different. Mm -hmm. Because the only way you're going to get the reimbursement is to run it through a hospital. Yes. And I, I can see maybe someday that going back to Seneca. Maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we sure can't afford it. Quite honestly, can't afford it. PH, they think they can make this work for a while, but the patients aren't going to be sent here. They're going. Right. I mean, that's going to hurt the reimbursement. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing. But a, Q, a QRB, like you mentioned, staffed with a paramedic and, and an EMT would would be a great sir, a great help. Yeah, so it really would. Yes, it would be. I mean, for, from a, from a human perspective, yes, did. absolutely. Like we could immediately yeah. begin dispensing. You know, if we if we got an, uh, an ALS agreement back in place, mm -hmm. a non transport ALS agreement, right. you know, we could get our narc bag or narc box back and start you know mm -hmm. start life saving care. Um, while perhaps waiting 20 or 30 minutes for an ambulance to show up, yeah, which is all that is all that's the new reality here. Um, yeah. But yeah, when, once it gets too too far in, it's just nothing is going to work without Seneca's help, and that they made very clear what they did and did not want to do. So I know this isn't agendized, but I have a friend who used to. Or I have a friend who used to work for the UN. And he called me up and he said, you need to get all the players together. He was rather hopeful that the state would get involved. 
But he would come up and uh, work something, work with you and, and uh, Sean, if we can get you to the table, if you're interested. I mean. So what you're telling me is that we need a wartime negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, man, Very charming. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that even that would would help. I mean, frankly, uh, and and these are all public records. You know, I did a public records request from Seneca to see what they were talking about the whole the whole time that they were ignoring us. Um, Seneca had prepared a contract that we would have found um, acceptable, that they would have found acceptable. Um, and really what the emails made clear is that this, it's all a personality conflict. And if Sean and I can't get along, apparently that means that none of you and Chester can have ambulance service. So if I approach Mr. McKenzie and he was agreeable, I'm going to assume you would be agreeable, but it's a last ditch thing. I don't know if it would work or not. Well, I'll do whatever my board no, directs me. I mean, I'll do whatever my board directs me to do, but at this point, and I'm also speaking for Chief Balzarini, mm -hmm. the chief and I, um, have no trust in the Seneca administration. They have straight up lied to our faces. Um, that would be a pretty hard and bitter pill to swallow. Um, and that's that has to be a rock hard relationship. Like that has to be. You can't. You can't go. Uh, no. Just, no. And and what he is saying is backed up by the information from the PRA. Mm -hmm. It was planned. It was a planned maneuver. It's all in emails. By the way, well, I think the Board of Supervisors was notified by Jerry Nielsen and the DA and the FPPC and Tom McGowan were behind trying to get that stopped to put this uh, measure on the board, I mean on the ballot. Yeah. The individual she's talking about is a professor at Chico State in business, international business and stuff. And when he's on uh, sabbaticals, he works for the UN. And I hired him when I was with uh, Johns Manville to start our change in uh, climate. It was terrible. Not as bad as here, but it was bad. And uh, he uh, he's very good at what he does. And if he did, he say he would volunteer to help us out. Okay, his, his name is uh, Dr. Charles Cambridge, uh, well-respected professor. He is uh, from Gallon. He's what about six six or something. A lot taller than me. And, uh, Everybody is. <laughs> I can't see that high, <laughs> but. Just put that in your repertoire in case that situation well, comes up. If we happen to get the, the $1,500 assessment, that might be something to revisit. Yeah. You know? Something to discuss? Yeah, we have to get over that first. Yeah. So what, what do we want to present tonight? What subjects do we want to cover? Who is going to be on the panel tonight? I don't believe we can all be there on the panel. No. Is Anne? Is anybody else going to be there on the on the panel? No, this is besides us. us? Just, you. just us. Yeah, this is a paid. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is a CPUD paid um, event. Event. What do you mean paid? Well, we pay for the theater. They pay for the hall. This oh, is. Okay. They pay for Sorry. this. This is not a. They call it a town hall meeting, but it's a faux town hall yeah. meeting. Yeah, it, it's a That's, town hall meeting because it's open to everybody right. in the town. Okay. However, CPUD is paying the cost, and uh, the chamber is being kind enough to facilitate. To faci With to audio facilitate. and everything? Yes, Correct. and Zoom and all of that. Yeah. So, again, my question. I have written down, how is the money to be spent? That was brought up. Um, the reassurance about the insurance. Reassurance about the reinsurance. Because that has been a big... Yeah, they've been throwing um, that back. Well, uh, what good yeah. is it going to do if we don't have insurance? Right. I'm even, and, and if somebody argues, I'm willing to say what happened. 
Yeah. It was not a matter of not being paid. That wasn't the problem. I think that needs to be we clarified because we've been hearing all that right. we were, misinformation. We were absolutely told that it would terminate. So um, we need full-time coverage. However, without money, we can't even provide what we've got going now with just one help lieutenant. <clears throat> this is about all we can come up with. Um, we're looking into a QRV, a quick response vehicle, um, that would involve MOUs. An oversight committee, um, I think we talked about. Yeah, we approved that money. If approved. Yeah, we approved that at the last meeting. Yeah, yeah we approved, approved it, so. Uh, you gave me direction to come back to you with the final framework, and then, okay. you'll, and then you'll take action to create it. Okay, okay. thank you. Just something to mention. Yeah, I think that we're, we're talking about doing that, whether the new ballot measures go through or not. For any tax? Oh, uh, yes, I believe Correct? so. Correct? Is that everybody's understanding? That we would have an oversight committee? Hmm. Regardless of whether the measures go through or not, it's why not a bad we, idea. Oh, I I'm sorry, but why would, regardless. why would we need an oversight committee <laughs> if we don't for the money if we don't pass either measure? Because there is the feeling that the money that we were already getting wasn't being taken care of, uh, that was being misappropriated or whatever. And this is to show that, you, that it, it doesn't hurt us. We have nothing to no. hide. Okay. And it and it doesn't, as, as Mr. Waterman said, it does um, give the community some sense of what what's really going on. I would say after the first two or three meetings, they're going to go, why are we yeah. here? But well, that's I mean, frankly, if you create one and all they're going to do is review the Measure A monies that you've been getting this whole time, it's, I mean, it's going to be really boring. I mean, I can tell you right now, all of, all of that money that you currently get from the special tax is going to go straight into the sewer fund for the next 13 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you have other aspects of the district, however. But none of which receive tax property special taxes. I, I understand that. But an oversight committee, you'd be able to see not just what the fire fund is. The, the underlying question is the whole district oh, operations right. and how those mm -hmm. fundings are spent. And, and I, again, I don't think it'd be a big deal. After a while, they'd go, oh, okay, I get it. Right. But um, I wouldn't just, and just my suggestion, I wouldn't restrict it just to fire. Because like I said, it's going to be boring as heck. Even with one of the measures that passed, because those funds are all eaten up, and it's easy to see where it goes. It's actually easy to see where everything goes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's just a matter of getting familiar with it. That's quite a challenge when you have new board members. It takes them months to learn how to read these financials. I understand. It's been a year. It's going to take a little time, but I think it would buy a lot in the public. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my understanding there's a big difference between an advisory committee and an oversight committee. Is that correct? Yes. The oversight committee, um, you're bound by certain regulations, and that might be difficult to get somebody willing to serve. I, I mean, I would say in my experience, they, they, an advisory committee is usually something that you set up like pre-election to get um, stakeholder input and on the language and everything in the ballot. And then an oversight committee is typically once you have tax monies coming in, then they'll meet, you know, anywhere from quarterly to annually. It's more of an official? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it would be subject to the Brown Act, and yeah, they would be agendized meetings, and yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I also, <clears throat> I have it here somewhere, what, what are the duties of a tax oversight committee? Typically, they meet quarterly. It's not like a weekly thing. They typically meet quarterly or even biannually just to check on things. That's, and, and if they see anything, they take it to the, the, the board immediately. Okay. okay, so how far into the weeds do we go? And I'm, I'm saying this because look what just happened earlier. I would recommend that you don't engage at this next meeting. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, are, is there gonna be like a Q and A session? They got the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Was it was very heated and pointed, um, and I don't think the public, the general public, these folks will get it. The general public is not going to want to see that. They want to see leadership. 
and they want to see um, you know, not willing to get down in the weeds and do get out with it, okay. but give facts. Right. So uh, it'll just be my recommendation. So okay. how yeah, do we deal of... with the fact that people are going to vote no based on what they have heard, that this board can't handle the money or can't handle their job or whatever? How do we address that thinking? How do we negate the, 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 the lies? I think we have to, like he says, stick to the points, um, like I did with the FTC and the district attorney, the salary, the individual things that we could, like when, when somebody comes to one of our round tables, we show them here. I think a simple statement. And you have this group, right? That's part of the group. One of the problems, Barbara Montandon has lived in this community for a long time and she is very well respected. And people believe what Barbara says. When Barbara speaks, people listen. She's been very involved with PAWS, um, with uh, search and rescue and other things. So um, when she goes off on one of her rants, I think you're better off just letting her rant and just not responding. May I ask what her point was, Barbara's point? What was it today? I, I didn't quite understand what she was saying. She was just shouting her down. It was just, I think it was control. They want to control everything that you do. They want to be sitting here. I think that list of what the board's accomplished in the last couple of yes. years is a, was a very, good. Was a very good thing. So there's, some, there's some power in, in just being able to factually list the things that you've done. <clears throat> and that proof of no corruption is, is big. I think a, a, a statement mm -hmm. from one of you from the FTC would, that would be good. And challenge people to call and to ask for themselves. Yeah. Well, it's pretty on those PRAs. That was good. Don't use anybody's name. If they'll, they'll, they will stand up and defend. You can talk about being called corrupt. But I think you can talk about that it should be put out there. And it's a form of false advertising, this thing that's running around the internet. It is kind of libelous. When Barbara went off, it was because I said, whether it's because you didn't get a job you applied for, or, and before I could go to yeah. she was young. She said she didn't get an interview or something like that. Yeah, yeah. she, she jumped, it didn't warrant an interview. That was Monica. That was well, the first, as soon as you said Monica's okay. name. That's when she started getting around up. And, and, when, when and she first who is, who's the GoFundMe set up by? She whose name shall not be mentioned. I, I would, I would, I would. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't realize she said her name. I, I didn't did. think she did. No. I said, and because there, there's a GoFundMe set up well, saying almost, stop the CPU do corruption. Almost everybody in that group has applied to be on this board since I've been on the board, or they've applied for a job here. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. You can't mention their names. No. 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 Well, don't saying. mention the names. Okay. Okay. But you just can't because it incites them. People know. People okay. know. Okay. I mentioned kidding. her name of that, and I'm being defensive because I did mention her name about the CPUD GoFundMe to stop yeah. CPUD corruption. That to me is slander, and it's unproven over and over again. And I said that it's made up of 12 or so people. And then I got into the other thing. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah, watch. Don't let them get you rattled in there. Take it, gummy. It's libelous, but you can't find it. I don't think it's very hard to find. So, while there might be libel out there, And again, if you guys need me to step down, step back, tell me. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Please. Yeah. Well, the only thing I have to say is go get it. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. Did you hear the voice of reason? <laughs> stick to the positive. All right. If, okay, and now, so we're going to stick Anne, to the positive. Anne is here, and she's going to kind of want to know what's going on. We're going to be getting a lot of questions, I think. Um, I think a lot of them will come in on writing and on cards. 
I believe we'll put the um, agenda with pretty much what we had before. We will present the things that we want to hear. I mean, we want to get out there what we want to hear, what we want to hear, want to have heard, and then open it up. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay, who's going on the board tonight? I'll be there if you need somebody. You guys decide. I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. I think you need to have, you need to switch it up with board members. Because Kim and Steve, you are the face of this board. And I suggest switching one of you out. I also suggest that you just have the board members up on the stage. That you don't have your general manager. Because... I think that that's wrong. The general manager reports to you. And at last, my opinion about last time's uh, town hall was that Adam answered a lot of questions because there were details to it, but it made the two of you look like you were deferring to him. And it changes the dynamic. But he does the presentation. Well, I, mean, I guess you can go and guess on everything. No, what I'm suggesting is, is that you're in the audience. If they have to defer and ask you something, they can do that. Do the presentation first and then, and then, have then move away from the audience, not on the stage. Your boy, he reports to you. That's where the leadership is. I, I report to them to run the district and to be knowledgeable about everything. But they're looking at the board as the leaders. Mm -hmm. So we, we change our way of doing things to fit them. You're a board of directors. Yes. That's what leadership begins with. Yeah, we're, she's right. Your general manager is for us. the day-to-day -day operations and delivering what you're directing. Okay, thank well, you. I think you should be up there, and then I could step back, except, I, except I'm the one that called the district attorney today. Um, Would it, okay, so if the other board members are in the audience, but they're not together and talking, is that a, a, is that a Brown Act violation? No. So we could call on them for specific questions? I would not do that, no. No, because no, 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 so, now you're getting everyone talking. No, it needs, yeah. to be, it needs to be limited to two board members talking. I'm just suggesting. I understand, but you have to understand, you have to realize that with Royce working full time, the, the chair, and, and it's, I think this is on most boards, the chair and the vice chair tend to be the most involved and have the most information. Right. I don't know everything by any means. I don't mean that, but I know that since, um, since becoming chair, I did not realize everything beforehand that goes on. Maybe for the next, the last one, who knows? You have more time to prep. Mm -hmm. Right now it's pretty short prep time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But if you feel that because of my presentation, I should step back, I certainly will. I don't feel that. Mm -mm. I don't. How about you, Steve? What? Why what? What do you mean? What if do you feel that I should not represent the board on I'm, the stage? I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. I, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. I just I want to make sure everybody has a chance to voice their opinion and be heard. Anybody? Just don't incite. I've got one thing. Go get them. I've got one thing. Don't but incite. That's, that's your... <laughs> Sometimes that's oh. no fun. <laughs> that's true. Well, I would not be surprised if they're armed for bear this, this group tonight. Yeah. So yeah. just don't let that knock you off your feet. I did. Stick to the agenda. And you have a facilitator yeah. that will help control that. So. I did read on Facebook that they will defend Anakin no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's their job, is to defend Anka. So I think you have to be really careful um, using her name. Well, I felt, that, I felt that it was important, though, to, to 
present this tonight, this afternoon, like we did, so that we are all on the same page um, as far as what I'm, to... I'm talking tonight. Right, I know, I know. Right. If that's what this meeting is for, is for us to have an open, honest, everything on the table discussion so that we are all aware and on the same page. <clears throat> What, what you do have, in addition to that list of accomplishments, is you also have factual things you have that refutes each of those. But at least what, what I've seen floating around, you have, you have the factual responses for all of those things. Right, we have evidence uh, to back up what we're right. saying. Yeah. All, those, all those things that you're saying are true. You have, you have data, you have documents. Right. It's, it, it's funny because like even with the FPPC, they couldn't show me what they were using for evidence. Right. And the same thing with the district attorney. They won't show me what the evidence, wouldn't even tell me what the complaint was. Yeah. But they would say that there was no evidence of a crime in any of the complaints. So that's all I can get. Stephen, do you mean, even if you need to say it more than once tonight, I think you, could, you can't say it more than enough. That mm -hmm. There's no evidence here. There's no evidence, and it's shown by our uh, attorney and by your F FPPC. Yes. And that we as a board have no knowledge of any kind of Well, misconduct. that's why I was quiet in November when she said it. I thought maybe she knows yeah. something we don't know. You know yeah. And then I finally kept talking to Sean at the district attorney's office. That's who they kept referring to. Apparently he's the one doing the investigating or whatever. And so I got a hold of him uh, twice now, and he said, oh, this, I haven't seen any evidence of a crime. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can repeat that too many times. Yep. Because she's got that false narrative going on out there in Facebook. And yeah, it is. There's a lot of people that read that. Up. <clears throat> and they're, they're also preaching the idea of replacing the entire board and starting new. That's the only way to straighten yeah, this it, thing this out. This board is responsible for... Yeah. Yeah. When we came on, when, and when this board started, as it sits right now, we were about one and a half million in the hole. The fire department was roughly one and a half million in the hole. Mm -hmm. We've operated for two years, and we were right at two million in the hole. So we, this cost us, I mean, you know, we're back in the hole about $500,000. And it was primarily caused with a situation, both state, federal, and local, uh, of reducing mm -hmm. our incomes. And when you have a reduction in your incomes, you have to start reducing your expenses, and right. that didn't happen. And Joe and I negotiated, and we, the whole board, we tried to redraft MOUs to try to, to get control of this situation three years ago, and we couldn't get anywhere. Yeah. More and more and more. From the perspective of reasons to vote for the tax measures, for, for me, I think the most powerful reason is it's going to cost me more in insurance if we don't have a fire department than, than it is if we, if we pass the parcel. Tax. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, it's cost benefit analysis for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you right now. I'm battling insurance companies left and right right now because they're canceling me and it isn't because of the fire department yet. Right. It, they're wanting to cancel everybody they're in this area. Cases. They're looking for anything. Circuit breakers aren't right. right. Mm -hmm. They The roof isn't right. They want me to hire. They have inspectors come out to look at the buildings and then they send me a letter and I've got them. And I was at the insurance agent this morning, uh, and they're saying, I have to hire professionals, professional electrician, professional plumber, and get letters, professional contractor, professional roofer, if I haven't said that one. And I have to pay them out of my pocket for what their inspector has already looked at and said it's okay. Yeah. But they just don't want you. Don't want and I went to my agent today, and I said, what's it going to cost me to go on the fair plan and get a liability policy? Mm -hmm. Just to see what it is. Because just the headache of getting those letters, or go on insured, just do liability. 
A lot of people are still getting turned down. But I'm able to do that. But there's a lot of people that can't. Right. Yes. On the third plan, uh, they are so inundated because insurance companies are pulling out of California, California yeah. in record numbers. They are, it's taken months to even get a quote, a proper quote from their plan. That's not issuing a policy, that's just to get a quote. Yeah. So uh, my daughter's um, an insurance agent and she has dealt with their plan and she said she's seen multiple cases where there are lapses of several months in coverage. Yeah. No coverage at all. Well, I'm still months yeah, out. I heard they were getting 100,000 applications a day. Easily. Easily. And what caused that, and what caused the, the problems out here, yeah. is regulation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Lawsuits. Government regulation. Mm -hmm. That's what's caused, that's what put me out of business. Regulation. I was so fed up with it, I just said, I'm done. Try to get a hold of HUD. You oh. can't do oh, it. Oh, you don't want to. There, you don't want to open that can of worms. I've dealt with them. Okay. <laughs> they, I got a hold of so somebody. That, you're gonna get you a hold of what they told me to do. Was. Drive to Sacramento. Well, I did, and I had to serve them because it, I, once we got the can open, we couldn't stop it. I <laughs> don't want to get them upset because they got all the regulatory power. Mm -hmm. Yep. You gotta kiss their. Yeah, they were gonna shut their spines down. So where are we now, guys? Okay, so I. I can read that you want. To take her recommendation and the, the, the two of us be up there again or one of you guys want to come up there and I'll just read this stuff? I think it's too late to change that because yeah. I'm not at all prepared to do anything right, right there. I think it's appropriate for you know, the chairman right. and the vice and chair to be up there. People don't like to do what we have to say. Well, they, 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 they wouldn't like it. The rest do it of us would have that to say. Not, there might not be anybody there. It's, you never know. know. I mean, do it's a good idea, yeah. but it's just too, so too soon, you know. It's, we're a half hour away from being up there. Well, nobody's prepared, but you know. It's at 5.30. 5.30, yeah. an hour, okay. So when I get out of hand, all I have to do is text me. My watch will go Duh -duh 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 on my arm. <laughs> there you go. And I'll go, oh. I think that's a, a great point that she pointed out, though. It's, it's, you know, but it's just a little too late right now. Yeah, you guys have more information than we do. Well, it's hard because I can get information. I can talk to one of y'all about it. That's it. This is the only time though, right. five of us can get together and talk. I know. Yeah. I want to lay one more insurance thing on you. They're doing a lot of Google Earth on these places. That's what the the uh, my broker this morning. Show me here's the Google Earth thing. They're looking at the roof of the building. They're saying it needs to be exchanged, you know, changed out by June. I said, I'm not going to do it. It's a fine roof. It's a little rusty. So what? I mm -hmm. refuse to do it. Okay. But I had a, another friend that they did the Google Earth. Oh, you have too many trees on your property. They want them to remove 30 of the trees that they counted, and it happened to be across the street from Steve here mm -hmm. in the cul-de-sac back in there. Oh, back in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they got a guesstimate of the trees taken out, $12,000, <laughs> you know, else they can't get insurance. <laughs> you know, it's, it has, it, even if we have a fire department, and they think we have a fire department now, and they're still requiring that. And I don't know where this, I've heard rumor that Cal Fire started all this with their maps and everything. This is a high, maybe Joe knows something about that, that this is a high fire danger area and it's tough luck. They so that's, the, that's the fire desert severity zone map. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it used to be a high fire area. Purposes. But you know insurance companies are going to use it. They're going to run with it. Yeah, the last time I looked at Google Earth, the picture on there was five years old, maybe mm -hmm. even older. Mm -hmm. But they're just looking at anything because of the, the lot of big payouts. I, well, they're looking at anything to cancel your insurance. Exactly. Our insurance for just our house and our property there uh, went from 3600 to 7900 a year. Couple. Just happened. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, oh, this is. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it is more of a California. It's not it's even. Chester has been having problems with insurance for almost ten years. People on Maywood on the backside have been having trouble getting insurance for eight to ten years. This is not a new problem. Yeah. The wildfire score or brush score is a program that rates areas around your home and it gives it, you know, green, red, orange, and it gives you an overall score. And based on what the carrier's stipulations are, if you have, if they're only going to write up to an 8 or a 10 and you have a 12, then that's just it. You don't, some of them you don't have a, a choice. My husband and I, when we put our new piece of, pro, or when we got our manufactured home, we dropped every tree on our lot. In one day, I cleared 20 to 25 trees off my property and my parents' property in one day. Fire but fire. we had the resources and a backhoe and a chainsaw to do it. Dump the trees on a neighbor's lot. My neighbors came and took the trees. It was gone. Done. We just had 43 trees taken out, and you can't tell it. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Anything else we can do to help you guys with your, with your questions you're getting? I'm just listening. Fear sells. Fear is what sells insurance. Fear is what sells cream. You don't want to look ugly. Fear is what sells cars. You don't want to have ugly cars somebody else. They're all afraid. And that's the thing. They are very afraid. And we have to almost find a way to make them more afraid of not having a fire station. And I don't know how that goes. I mean, if you can't see it, you can't see it, but trying to alleviate their fear, fear is probably your best move. I've always was talking. So that's the only positive stuff and try to... Okay. And you have an uphill battle against what was out here before. Yeah. You know, the, the culture out here. Royce will attest to that with ambulance calls, the way these guys behaved, yes. uh, the, the way they behaved towards the public, it, and even their own other interagencies didn't want to deal with them, you know? Now, can, so. can we say that? Can we say that as a, our, sure. our group? I don't want to be saying things that are... Well, if it's... This is all things that I have heard that's true. Okay. You have a timeline. So, you have a timeline over there. Uh huh. I'm gonna take pictures of it. So but it. Uh, and those problems were never addressed until and after Chief Balzarini got here. You know, they were addressed after even he took. Uh, Insubordination, I'll call it. Right. Well, I mean, it was just sheer crazy, and you can't get rid of these guys because the, you got to go through this union process. Keep keep that thought. We're going to go ahead and um, close the meeting, and if okay. you guys want to keep talking, that's great. But I think at this point we're, we need, to, yeah. So, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to close. Second. The meeting. Here we go. Moved by Raker, seconded by Grafwig. All in favor? Aye. All in favor. Aye. Do you have a list of accomplishments? Yeah. Okay. So hey, guys, thank you. They aren't doing transit. No. You know, fire is trying to get them out. We only need one day, so then we've got to try to get the you know, like today, they're not flying today, so it has to go off the mountain by ground, and so then we've got to get a care flight out of the Sometimes some cell help us out of the two girls. It's just a nightmare right now. I wouldn't want to be there. They had promised us that they would come and get this fire. This is a very long time. Yeah. Well, they really, they, the Penn Fire, has realized that it's a lot busier than they, they imagined. You know, we have a lot of transfers that go out that need to be.
taken to a higher level of care than, than they ever imagined. But we're only getting 25 percent of our billing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably got 10 a month, though. They have to be driven for renowned. Who educated you? Where do you Good job.